In today's video, we're going to introduce you to the fascinating histories of the incredible Rhodesian Ridgeback. Welcome back to the Femre Ridgeback Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder here at FemreCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the incredible Rhodesian Ridgeback, then how you can become a high-level canine leader that raises perfect Ridgeback companions. So if you love the Rhodesian Ridgeback as much as we do here at Fenre, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, and you'll never miss a future Ridgeback video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll tell you all about the history behind one of the world's most glorious dog breeds. The first known evidence of dogs with ridges on their backs in South Africa is the form of an illustration in the book Missionary Travels in South Africa by 1857 by the known explorer David Livingston. Some 60 or so years later, a written description was found in Canadian historian George McCall Field's book The Yellow and Dark Skinned People of Africa, South of Zimbabwe, written in 1910, describing the circumstances in South Africa before 1505. But the Rhodesian Ridgeback were in the making long, long before that. The breed originates all the way back to when European explorers landed in Africa in the 17th century. They had brought their own dogs who unfortunately proved to be unsuited for the excessive heat, the lack of water and the rough environment. Amongst these breeds were Mastiffs, Great Danes, Bloodhounds, Pointers, Staghounds and Greyhounds. The settlers needed a dog to protect them and to use in hunting. And when their dog began crossbreeding with native dogs who accompanied the native people, a dog who suited their needs soon began to evolve. It wasn't until the midst of the 19th century, however, as the work towards creating the breed as we know it today really began. The European presence expanded in the area, called Matabaland, later known as Zimbabwe. The people who came from Europe were hunters, traders and missionaries, and with them came their dogs, who were used not only for simple company, but also guardians, protectors and hunting dogs during the long, often dangerous transportations in rough environments. Persistence, loyalty, courage and survival instincts were qualities these dogs needed to survive. The offspring of the dogs that had been brought to Africa a couple of hundred years earlier were far better equipped to endure the African conditions than the new European imports. The European dogs were inevitably breeding with various mutts during transfers over the land. These dogs were called boar dogs and were soon a common sight in the African landscape. Amongst these boar dogs were various types, Steak Bard, which was the most usual, but there were also the Veal Bard, Varhund, Manhar and Verkerherd Har. None of these were ever developed as separate breeds. Charles Helm was a missionary who came to live at the missionary station Hope Fountain Mission, close to the area in 1875. He bought two female dogs named Lorna and Powder, said to have ridges on their backs. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femre Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Afferton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behaviour cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. Want to visit the Hope Fountain Mission Centre, which was a place for rest and recovery for travellers, was the big game hunter Cornelius Van Ruyen, who happened to be a good friend of Charles Helm. Van Ruyen originally came from Utenhag outside Port Elizabeth in South Africa. He lived with his wife and children on the farm, where he, during the summer, ran a small farm. During winter, however, he left the farm to go on long hunting expeditions, where he hunted large games such as lions, elephants, giraffe, and many others. He used a large pack of dogs to assist in the hunt, and amongst these were greyhounds, Irish terriers, English pointers, long-haired collies, and grandinois, plus a number of crossbreeds. These dogs' main job were to help hunt, but also to guard and protect the campsite from wild animals and unwanted guests. Now, it's these two people that are the people who are behind the Rhodesian Ridgeback. The two females, Lorna and Powder, were bred with dogs from Van Roon's pack of hunting dogs, and the result were dogs who performed extremely well as hunting dogs, especially for lions. 
They had the courage, the independence, intelligence, mobility and perseverance required for hunting in these widespread lands where only the strongest survive. It is said that Van Roon kept one puppy from each litter to improve his own pack of hunting dogs. At that time, it's unlikely that he cared much for the ridge on their backs, but his selection would rather have been focused clearly on the hunting qualities. However, his work didn't go unnoticed whatsoever, and his dogs were very soon known as the Van Ruins Lion Dogs. Now, five years before he died, English postmaster Francis Barnes moved to Fig Tree a few miles outside of that area. He was very interested in dogs and had previously been breeding English pointers. He got himself three of these lion dogs and it didn't take too long until he engaged himself in creating the very first Rhodesian Ridgeback Club in 1922. Barnes was chosen to its first chairman and together with veterinarian C.G. Edmonds he also created the first breed standard which was based on the Dalmatian standard. Nowadays the Ridgeback can be found all over the world and it was in around the 1920s that they first started to be exported and the first dog to reach Great Britain was in 1914 even before the breed was official. The next export went to Great Britain in 1927, but it wasn't until after World War II that the, re the breed became much more known. Since then, the Ridgeback has found its way around the world and is very popular in most countries. Now, I hope you did enjoy that video and that quick breakdown of the fascinating history that goes in many different directions, but leads us to the glorious Rhodesian Ridgeback. If you did enjoy it, please give the video a thumbs up and remember, subscribe and turn on that notification bell because we've got two new Ridgeback dedicated videos coming to this channel every single week. And I cannot wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Ridgeback Show.